Welcome to Fort Dram and Gold. We've got episode 35. A king has returned. And football, football, football. So grab a glass, put the game on mute, and take a listen. Let's do this. Welcome to Fort Dram and Gold. Thank you for joining us. I'm your boy, Kurt, and I've got my boy, Dick, here. What's up, Trammers? We have got some scotch, scotch, scotch in our glasses. We're going to drink it up. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about some football all over the place as we're watching a back to normal, shitty Thursday night football game between the Jaguars and the Bengals. We had a lot of good football this past weekend. We've got some riffs going on in the media and coaches, and we're going to dive into all of that as we go on throughout the night. Dick, what is up, my friend? You want to lay those socials that you've been working so hard on lately right on kurt yeah man so big news we finally got all of our uh episodes uploaded on youtube so all of those are available all the way through episode 33 episode 34 should be hitting the airwaves here today or tomorrow of course and you can always find us at uh, fourthramandgold.com we've got our instagram twitter linked from there as well as our facebook and whatever you're listening to us on right now, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Audible, CastBox, Spotify, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever you do on that mechanism. Uh, make sure that you know when we're posting new episodes. Now we're back in football season, as Kurt talked about last time. We're trying to hit this every week, week and a half or so. Uh, we've got families, but we're trying to be here for you, our fourth Dram family. And like we said, we're always looking for new followers, new feedback, and shoot us an email, fourthdramagoal at gmail.com. That's 4-T-H-D-R-A-M-A-N-D-G-O-A-L at gmail.com. So, Kurt, we'll kick it back to you, man. Thank you for that, Dick. Um, this is important, though. There are things that are just more important than the game, and i would got to say this is one of them. I may not go to sleep tonight. I need to take a shot for this. Are you going to drop some bombs on me? Poor warning you. No, I've just, I can't, I can't tell you the last time I was so excited for a movie release. I feel like I'm five years old. Venom. No, Uh, that one's, nah. Do you know what gets released tonight on HBO Max? House Party 3? It's hard being your friend sometimes. The Many Saints of Newark gets released tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, James Gandolfini origin story, right? <laughs> you said like, James Gandolfini. Uh, yeah, the James Gandolf. It's the freaking Sopranos prequel tonight. And we would not do it justice if we did not mention it. I mean, how could we not? It's one of the uh, greatest shows, greatest series of all time. I think we even referenced it in our last episode, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't think one of. No, I mean, literally our last episode we referenced. No, I'm saying one of the great. You said one of the greatest. I don't think that. I think The Sopranos is the greatest thing that's ever been on a TV screen. I mean, I think that's arguable if you're actually being real about this. But Mm, sure, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. If you want to be wrong, yeah, you can argue. All right, uh, I'll give you this. The greatest mafia series on TV. You're putting it in a box. Nope. It is a work of art, and we am have I, talked about this. Am I putting Tony in the corner? Oh, you're you're going to upset about it? About to put your ass in the corner. Um, Dude, yeah. No, I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm not going to be able to sleep. And if I toss and turn until, like, what is it? It's going to be It's going to be about 4 a.m. our time, maybe? No, no, no. Maybe. T- no, shit. Two. <laughs> I don't know how this works. But. You don't know how time works? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to toss and turn until it releases, and I may just stay up and watch the damn thing. It's a bold move, Cotton. What are I your am... expectations? My expectations are not... No, 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 I take that back. Okay. Have you watched every single episode of The Sopranos? Yes. Okay. Like within what the last year and a half. Expectations. And you know I've talked to Tony about this. Tony the Tiger? Yeah. Yes, our friend Tony the Tiger, who's more flakier than a frosted flake. Yes, you're absolutely correct. But I've talked to him about this. Um, but w- what are your expectations? Are you actually going to let me answer the question this time? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So my expectations. But I mean, seriously. Jesus fucking Christ. This, this fucking guy. 
Uh, and it's fucking gay. Maron. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my expectations are it does the series justice, paints a good enough picture, but I want to make sure that it doesn't go away from the cutscenes that Tony had back when he was a kid, like actually following his father along. So I want to make sure there's no interference from the storyline there. But at the end of the day, I don't know that I have any huge, huge expectations, like Emmy Award winning expectations. But I just wanted to hold the water of the series, if that makes sense. What about you? Seems like you have some expectations. Oh, that's going to be tough. No, this is one of those things like when it ended, you just had that feeling like, I just want more. I just don't want it to end. I want it to be a part of my daily life and go on forever. So this feeds that a little bit. Prequel, of course, if you're comparing time to get it, I can compare it to the show. That's going to be so tough. Uh, I know David Chase, the creator, wasn't too happy because um, with the whole HBO Max thing, like he was he was pretty pissed off because they're losing money. Yeah. Well, well, not necessarily that, but he was like, this is one of those. And it was the same with the Irishman, I think. Like, there was like, you've got to experience it in theaters. And I think it was a little bit of that. And I think he may have even said, like, if he had known this was how it was going to be released, that he wouldn't have been okay with it. But uh, I got high expectations. I know um, the first time you see Gambafini on screen, you're going to get a lump in your throat because you're just like, God, dog it. But uh, oh, I'm so pumped, dude. Like, in all honesty, I'll probably have to go to work. Son of a bitch. And then I'll probably come home. I'll probably get the big old jug of red wine. Probably get the garlic bread. Probably do a nice little pasta. Like, I'm... I, and that's the cool thing. Shit, this is going to sound bad. But this is one of the cool things about the COVID situation that we're getting these movies you know, yeah. and don't get me wrong, sometimes popcorn, pickles, and a drink, that's fine. But, like, this is a movie release, and I'm going to make a whole fucking dinner out of this. I'm going to enjoy it in front of my TV. Yeah, it's like TBS when they used to do dinner and a movie. Like, that's what you're doing at home, man. Oh, I love that. What was that song? It was, a. Uh, oh, what was it? It was like, beans and cornbread, boom, boom. Beans and cornbread. Was that is that the one that I'm thinking of? I don't know. TBS used to so. use dinner in a movie, and they used to actually cook dinner and watch the movie. No, it, I know exactly. Isn't that the theme song too? It wasn't it. Beans and cornbread. I don't know. Bread, boom, boom, boom. We will be looking that up soon. Probably. Uh, it's probably like you have that stuck in your head. Like I have the MBAs in the house Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from TNT back in the day in my head all the time. And I can picture the guy. I can't. I can vaguely. He was a goofy I, bastard. I can vaguely picture who the. She was mildly attractive. Mm. Yeah, he was too. Uh, anyway. <laughs> we were, oh, speaking of mildly attractive. Segway. I thought, so you know those energy drinks that you'll find at the store and you're probably like, I don't think this was made for American release. Like it probably shouldn't be here. Well, I got my hands on one of those. And it was one of those where like I end up like talking to myself Lots of vitamins and shit, words I can't pronounce. Um, and I had the perfect water cooler conversation with myself. And thus, I have the privilege of now sharing the glorious conversation with you. And? And Joe Burrow just threw a bomb to Chase, right? Is that what I you know, were? I needed that. Oh, Burrow's on my bench, so I'm kind of looking like a smart guy right now as it's 14-0. So, picture this. Our wives leave us, okay? Because we know high, high probability that they would leave us. I was going to say, well, you mean when they leave us? Yeah, like I'm 10 pounds away from probably that. Okay, they leave us. Schefter releases the the post we're free agents all right it's going down a wild track but i'm gonna follow you <laughs> you hitting the free agent market would be equivalent to what quarterback hitting the free agent market 
Um, and then it gets in detail because, like, if there's matting ratings, all right, speed, agility, fuck that shit. We don't have, well, depends what we're talking about. Uh, okay. Is a high speed a good thing? If we're talking cooking, like, I'm a solid, like, 88, 89. All right. Talking cleaning, eh, maybe yeah, 70. I'm, I'm like a 95 in the cleaning department. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Whatever. I, I am. Okay. But anal retentive. Mm, uh, let's see. Speaking of anal retentive, let's talk that one category. You know, eh, eh, that we probably both get very low markings. Okay. But like, what quarterback? Because I, I can. T- we're not. We're not Patrick Mahomes hitting the free agency market. No, we're, we're being bo- real because we all lose the looks. And I swear to fucking god, if you say I'm like Andy Dalton. Like, I will no longer be your friend. And it's so sad that that was the first thing I thought. I was like, man, I swear to God, if he says, like, I'm I'm like Andy Dalton, like, I'll be so heartbroken. But I'm going to tell you right now, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers are off the list because we don't have the looks. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ooh, for you? Yeah. You're calling yourself a Ryan Fitzpatrick? I'm going to, and this is why. Holy, holy hell. <laughs> I'm not saying who do you look like. I'm saying if you were to hit the free agency market. Okay. Oh, we're okay. going to more specifics. I'm okay. telling you, this energy drink was working. So, like, cooking. Like, I can wine and dine. All right. I put the French cuisine, the Italian cuisine. But you've got that rugged, like, I'm the barbecue man thing going for you. You know, you've got, like, the pit. So, like, maybe your free agency profile picture is you opening up the smoker and just the smoke just hitting you. So you like, can see my got- meat. Yeah, um, no, don't make this weird. Um, I'm pretty sure you're well, making this weird so in this maybe, conversation. Maybe you're like a Nick Foles, you know? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, I'm going to tell you who I think I am, and I'm going to give you my reasons. And Are you thought about you this first? I'm, no, no, no. I want you to go first because I'm, I'm trying to rethink this in my head. Let me hear your rationale, and we'll go from there. You take looks out of the picture. I'm fuck. I am. I'm a Matthew Stafford. I think that mm. I think that solid, probably not in the upper upper, but maybe B echelon. And I think cooking solid, cleaning meh. You know, funny guy. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. That's oh, when's reason. he coming? I, huh? When's that guy showing up? Ah, ah! I'll have you know that that's a big reason why my wife fell in love with me. Thank you very much, because I'm a fucking funny guy. I don't care what you say. You think I'm a funny guy. Our three listeners think I'm a funny guy because they listen. Uh, so yeah, I'm saying Matthew Stafford. I'm 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 picturing Shefty's release of my picture, and it's like I think it's big news. I don't know, man. This is a difficult one, but it's good one, right? Yeah. The funny thing is, if I were to let my oh. wife answer this question, I probably am like Andy Dalton. Or like Trevor Simeon, something like that. I'm gonna say Josh Allen. Mm, I'll give my rational why. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So super passionate. I can throw Bills bombs. Mafia. Yeah, exactly. I can throw bombs like in the departments of like going hard on cooking, cleaning, big gestures, the whole nine yards, romanticism, that sort of thing. But my day to day short game can be questionable because I can be a little lazy. And a little, let's just say persnickety. That's probably a good word for it. Persnickety. You do have, like, you have the dream dad bod. Like, you have the perfect, like, dad bod. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Yeah, Josh Allen and I have had the similar body. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, but, dude, I had that. I was like, I really was like, okay, I'm not, like, in my, like, would I be, like, Matt Ryan hitting the free agent market? No, because you're still young. I I probably I guarantee you, me and Matt Ryan are si- very similar in age. No, you want me to? Let's, Matt let's, Ryan's like thirty six. Mm, I don't think so. Let's see here. Let's do my own producing as I click on the. Uh, oh, I beg to differ. Matt Ryan is thirty six years old. Okay. Uh, so oh, thank you. Got, yeah. Uh, and I think yeah. that's like two weeks in a row have been right about some but we're definitely, thing. I, you know, and I was realistic. I wasn't Deshaun hitting the market, and especially not for those reasons. Um, 
It wasn't Mahomes, wasn't Rogers. I went down very carefully, but I'd like to say, you know, I'm not like I, I think I let myself. Yeah, no, I think I, yeah, where you can't get you can't get a job. Um, well, I think highly I, myself. I was Cam Newton last off season. I'd agree with that. It's hard to not say you're Andy Dalton because you look so much fucking like him. Yeah, I mean that's true. I can just say this like, is my team, and everybody's gonna be no, it's not. It's the other dude's team. <laughs> How do you think? I'm just here for a night. <laughs> yeah. So if you're listening, go have that water cooler conversation. Maybe change it up. Maybe go free agent any position. All right, but from yeah. now on, I think if you Madden rated me like as a as a spouse, and you're very you're like sensitive as shit too. Like you you you'll work up the tears and you'll me like, yeah. You've got that going for you. No, I doubt. think it, I, I'm gonna be confident. I'm gonna say ninety one. Ninety one. Mm-hmm. I I bet you you would sit through a movie of the bridges of Madison Square County, and you would probably have the best night of your life. Well, the best night, but I. I'd have a good night afterwards, probably, because I'm playing a long game. Have you seen that movie? No. Okay, that's good. I wanted to double check here. But I mean, like, I've seen Mo- Steel Magnolias multiple times. Okay, what's pushing the chick flick limit for you? Like, what's the chick flick that you... That I won't watch? My wife No, is- no, that you have watched, and you say, that's about as far as I'll go. Chick flick limit. Oh. Um, probably some recent Netflix show. I drew the line at a at a movie called Kissing Booth. Uh, my wife has watched oh, all three of them. That's a Netflix. That's a workaholics, dude, isn't it? I have no idea. No, I don't think so. I don't know. It's huh. some. It's super chick flicky, and I just like I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But I'll watch like the emotional movies. Yeah, I'll get into those. My wife hit me with a truth bomb the other night. She was like, "I'll never forget one of our favorite nights was." When we were like young and like bef- before careers, and she was like, we had blueberry wine, cheesecake, and the bodyguard, and she was like, and it was like one of I, I was like, yeah, that's that's just, that's all I gotta do, like yeah. that's it, like I young, fucking I love Kevin Costner, like that's it. Young, <laughs> dumb, and broke will go far. It's all it about does. passion. And the bodyguard, if you've got to watch a chick flick, I mean. That's in the dream category right there. See, I'm more of a pretty woman. I don't want to get into this conversation because I had that convo with my wife the other day. Okay, you know what? I will go there. Pretty Woman is like that movie's full of shit. That movie's full of shit. The ending is crap. That's not how it's supposed to end. Urban Cowboy is full of shit. With John Travolta? Yes. What the fuck? Where did that come from? Well, what's her name? Sissy? Maybe? Sissy goes and sleeps with a dude that was just got out of prison. Like, he, she slept with the guy that just got out of prison, and he was all nasty and oily. And, Bro, and, John, we're from and John's going to be like, not- hey, John, come back to me. You know, with I got possibly, you know, some kind of... I caught something, something. I mean, that did you see the trailer in that movie? Holy cow. And then, no, there's there he is. Like, come on, everything's fine. That's how kind of Pretty Woman is. Yeah, well, in Pretty Woman, he was supposed to leave her on the side of the road at the end of the movie with $3,000 and drive off. But that's not how it ended. I couldn't tell you because I refused to watch it. If I watch Making Movies Of on Netflix, highly recommend it. It's a good one. The movies that made us, that's what it's called. What if you, what's this, this show called? I never wanted to watch the movie in the first place, so I haven't watched it. Have you watched This that? is a whiskey Episode? show, right? In sports. Yeah, well, you got me going. All I'm right. pretty sure you got yourself going this morning. So, so back to our topic, because Dick's too good to... to I mean, I could ramble watch. all night about chick flicks if that's what you want to do, but... Maybe I do, but it's because you're sensitive, and that's why you've got a high... Pot potential husband Madden rating rating. Okay. Uh so you want to get into our glasses there, buddy? Man, we haven't even been drinking and we're getting all emotional and shit. This is gonna be a good one. Let's do it, my dude. Okay. Uh so you kind of with your little spiel the other day, and then me thinking about the times that I snuck into my pops' uh cabinet, I was like, let's go with Shivas 12. Why not? Uh, and have, are you already correcting me on how to say that? Did you say Shivas last time? I did. So Shivas 12. And I did. 
Dick. Um, we've got an 80 proofer. This is a $32 bottle, but I have the $3 airplane bottles. So it is a blended scotch and it is a space side. And I've actually done a little homework. And by homework, I mean I Googled space side scotch characteristics. And when you do that, you get space side whiskeys are known for being frugal with peat and full of fruit, apple, pear, honey, vanilla, and spice, and all have a part of a role in expressions from the region, which are usually commonly matured in sherry casks. So that's on Google, which I guess they're getting that from scotchwhiskey.org.uk. Uh, yeah, I got the airplane bottles because it's football season. Lots of money spent on barbecue. Lots of money spent on chips, dips. So yeah, we're we're gonna rock and roll this Scotch fucking season, dude. Have you seen how much beef is going for right now? Jesus, holy cow! I've seen like hundred and fifty dollar briskets, dude. The ribeyes I was buying like a couple months ago, like. They're like 23 bucks for one. 25 bucks say? a pound is what I'm seeing right, right now. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, I guess we're eating a lot of chicken in this house. Well, that's why I pulled pork, man. Pulled yeah, pork that's, is such... that's probably the way to go. But it's like it's like the Cordell Stewart. There's so many things. You could put them in a Cordell sandwich. Cordell Stewart. You could put it in a taco. You could just put a little coleslaw on top of it. Like, it's versatile. We'll talk about Pittsburgh later. All right. So for me, I am also drinking a space hide. Um, I'm drinking a single malt, though. And this is actually the scotch that got me into scotch. Um, this is an 86 proof, the Balvenie Doublewood 12 year. So what is 12 year? It's aged and cast for 12 years. What is Doublewood? That's really your question. It's actually, it changes casks twice throughout its lifestyle it started in one cask and it's actually finished in another and when you actually look at this it comes in a tin can and when you look at it one side it tells you about the first cask the second side the other side it tells you about the second cask on the front label and on the back it says from the distillery the balvany doublewood aged 12 years characterized by rich honey sweetness and a delicate layer of sherry i'll give you my thoughts on it later um but i think this is a half truth Half truth, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about it. How much you? How much did you say? So this is typically going to run you about sixty-five bucks if you see it on the shelf. Um, the Caribbean cast is a fourteen-year that'll run you about eighty, eighty-five. This was my first high-end scotch, not this bottle, but Balvenie Doublewood. And if you say like, "What is your scotch?" This is probably it next to Lagavulin in sixteen. So did you go grab this, or did you, is this one of those that you always have at the house? This is one that was buried and not buried, but it was in the back of my liquor cabinet because I don't drink scotch that often. And it right. was so, three quarters full. Yeah. So this is our disclaimer. I mean, that's that's a $65 bottle. And then you had what last week? I had a Nick Offerman. Well, it, it was essentially Lagavulin 11 Nick Offerman edition. Which was how much? 81. Yeah. So scotch is a different ball game. When it you're is. Talking about, you know, that's one of the hesitations that a lot of people have. But I mean, we're just trying to get you to try one, and maybe you'll find that one bottle to have and I'm uh, have some fun out of it. I'm really excited you picked up Shivas Well. Like that is one of the quintessential. I think we talked about in the last one. Like everything with Scotch was the shit. It was the 1960s Mad Men. That's what they were drinking with Shivas. Like that's I what they were drinking old fashions. Well, yeah, but if you're drinking Scotch, like if you were a Scotch guy back then, you were drinking Shivas. How many times? How many times this season do you think we go Scotch, Scotch, Scotch? I like Scotch. It takes me about two scotches to start doing it, so probably a lot just this episode. Oh, and I'll tell you what else I've been just craving. And I just need to buy them. I'm just a snob. Oh, dude, I want a cigar so bad when I drink scotch. Like bourbon, I'm good on it on its own. Yeah. And a cigar does go good with it, but when oh with scotch, I want to be puffing on it so bad. First time I ever first time I ever drank this whiskey was smoking a cigar. Nice. You ready to get into that second dram? Let's do it. Uh, is this game getting more entertaining? Is Cincinnati yeah, it's driving a, to make it 14-14? 14-7 now. Oh, nice. Joe Burrow. Um, so, 
this will be NFL news before we get into some picks and things like that. The big one, because it's kind of close to home here, did you read any of this stuff about Bill O'Brien intentionally getting fired because he wanted to take over the Patriots? No. Enlighten right. me. That's that's essentially what... It, I guess there was a new book that came out. What is he uh, doing now? I, I don't know. Craft, so how did that plan work out for him? Not good. Uh, but apparently a book came out. Uh, in that book, Kraft says something like Belichick's a real asshole. Um, and that Bill O'Brien yeah. was just essentially just trying to start a dumpster fire to get fired in uh, Houston, which... Congratulations, that part worked. You uh, did it. Thanks, thanks a lot, Bill. But yeah, the, apparently he was like, "Oh, I'll just go be the Patriots' next fucking head coach." And but they're going to fire Belichick. Out. Apparently, I think that's kind of what the the book hits on that. That's been a possibility a couple times throughout his tenure. I mean, he did manage to lose the goat, so yeah, shit. Only won six Super Bowls with him. Damn it, Bill. Seriously, go to one seven. You know, somebody made a good point the other day on Facebook, and I think it was a meme. Like the Jets essentially started Tom Brady because they killed Drew Bledsoe. Yep. And then they just get their ass kicked by Tom Brady for the next 20 years. Yeah. But yeah, I did see those. And then I also saw like how did Trubisky go to two playoffs with Matt Nagy, which is a very good point. Um, with who? Matt Nagy, oh, Matt Nagy. Yeah, yeah. Bears, yeah. Who Justin Fields didn't didn't necessarily have a very good game. I think they said after you're his being generous. sack yards, he was positive one. One yard, that is. Um, I hope it turns around for him. Let's go into Rogers. Is Rogers back? Well, we even talk about Brady returning. Well, right, but I figured we could wait on that because we've got to give us we got to give a prediction to that game. So I figured okay. let's let's hit the brakes there. Rogers, what do you mean? Is he back? Is he back? Like, like skill wise, is he reinvested in Green Bay, or is he just like playing at his old potential? What do you mean by dramas? Back? Dramas behind him. Dramas not behind him. No way. Oh, I don't know. It's pretty damn good. Thirty eight seconds he had there, buddy. Well, yeah, because that's he's a player. Like he is the dude. He's not going to – He's not. I, I said this at the very beginning of the season. He's not going to allow the off-field shit to – like. he's not going to tank the season on purpose. It's just not going to happen. Like He wants to win. He craves to win. He's building his case right now to go somewhere else next year. He's still saying, I got it. He's back, but he's not back in Green Bay. Okay, that was going to be my second part. So no chance. No chance that he's, you know – the Packers are going to be his Richard Greer. He's going to be their Julia Roberts, and they're going to live together oh. forever. No, not at all. Pretty I, woman. Walking, walking down. down. Okay. Uh, fair enough. I thought it was, I thought that was a hell of a, I didn't see the interview afterwards, but I think it was emotional. I don't know. He looked happy. Good for him. I, I hate the Packers doing good. I love Aaron Rodgers. Um, but God dang it, Jimmy Garoppolo can't catch a freaking break. Like, that hey, was his chance. He can't catch a break because he's not a good quarterback. He's okay. No, he's not. Stop. Stop. He's not. Stop. Everyone he's needs to stop okay. giving him credit for being okay, and that's why he should be, also be a starter. No, he shouldn't. Cam Newton's better than him. Currently? Yeah, I would take Cam Newton over Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, he led them on that drive right before. He's and about what's, what's five yards away from having a Super Bowl ring. Okay. So wasn't Colin Kaepernick very close to? Yeah. Poor Colin. I mean, just, just go with Trey Lance. Good God. He's your future. Just, just fucking put him in already. He's not. Maybe he's learning from Garoppolo. Okay. Well, yeah. Garoppolo's already said that like he's going to do what he's got to do. Do you know. think Garoppolo has a job next year as a starter? Mm, no. Do you think Cam does? No. Okay. Do you I think, think Cam's Cam done? Has a job? No. I don't think he has a job as a starter next year, and I I think he's going to have to fall into the right situation this year to get that job. I see somebody getting a 
uh, quarterback hurt needing a backup and him getting week six, week seven, maybe like Miami or yeah, you know, um, the football team, yeah, or uh, Chicago, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you this. Or Houston. Got it. Shut the fuck up. Uh, Kirk Cousins, Jimmy Garoppolo. Who am I taking? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. That's like scraping the bottom of the barrel right there. Uh, right? Cu- Cousins. I think Cousins is actually proving he can win games right now. And Garoppolo's not proving that he can win games? No. I'm not even gonna continue that. I mean, you asked my opinion. I mean, yeah, okay. I said it's, it's. I mean, it's toss up. I'm not saying because it's that much better. Uh, Super Bowl halftime announced. Fucking pumped or what? I didn't even see who it was. Who is it? What? Do you live in an egg? No, I live in a uh, eight by fourteen room for seven hours a day. So no. Eight by fourteen. All right. Well. I'll give you one of those collect calls here soon. Um, (laughs) It was Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, Snoop Dogg, Dr. J, Mary J. Blige, I think. You're lying. I swear to God. You're lying. You're lying. Did you invade my wet dreams and then pull them out? I I don't ever want to be mentioned in the same sentence as any of your wet dreams, but... Yeah, we've got that is my Super Bowl halftime Dog, wet dream. Dr. Dre, Eminem, Mary, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. Dude, that's gonna be can I can we say lit? That Are we too old? So lit. It is so uh, lit. Let's just run it is, for everybody right that now. That is so lit. lit AF. Liddy. Liddy. Like that is awesome. Do you know how much marijuana is gonna be smoked in that vicinity when they perform? I mean, I know how much marijuana might be smoked in my vicinity when they perform. How much marijuana will be smoked in your vicinity? I fucking told you. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So back to speaking of high off your ass. So how much how- marijuana will be smoked in your vicinity? Is that what you were going to answer? No, 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 not much. Not much. I mean, none. All yeah. right, so <laughs> calm down, Chong. Um, dude, that is going to be an awesome show. Like, I can't believe I missed that announcement because I don't think I've actually cared about the performers ever. And the sad part is, like, young, our generation, Kendrick's already, like, I mentioned him, what, maybe 20... 2011 2012 so he's already kind of out of his window but for us this show's awesome the sad part is there are already those people that have the post typed out ready to go oh my god what was that oh you call that a halftime show i'd much rather would have had chris stapleton oh this sucks so bad like they're like those people are lined up and, and ready oh when are they gonna let kiss out there and perform or led zeppelin or somebody else that i used to freaking you know what to myself back in the day like but this one, for us, pretty yeah. damn exciting. This is gonna be—I mean, this is gonna be the shit. And we talked about that last year. We're not huge fans of Future, but he put on a show. But people, of course, just not Future. Holy crap! Uh, the weekend. <laughs> I have Future, by the way. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. If I had to listen to him, I'd be, you know. Uh, but yeah, so that was that was some big news that dropped today. Okay, let's go into our pretenders or contenders segment before we we do the Brady preview. All right, there are okay. four three and O teams. Yup, the Las Vegas Raiders, the North Carolina Panthers. It's just Carolina, but sure. But I, I damn it, PD Pablo, keep up with me. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams and the John Denver Broncos. Oh, I thought um, you were going to do a mile high Broncos, like you know, country road, take me home. It's West Virginia, yeah, but John Denver. Oh, yeah, I thought we were okay. 
Damn it. Come on. Come on. Um, scotch, scotch, scotch. I love scotch. Scotch, 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 scotch. Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders. Contenders or pretenders? Did you say Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders? All right. Okay. Yeah, that's the Raiders are, are contenders. Like Big C. What do you think? I, 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 there's nothing that says no because you look at the team that they've beat, and uh, yeah, like they're, of course, I'm going to pull up the schedule of everybody we're going to talk about. We, we, we looked at that last week. Yeah. Right. It's, it's pretty favorable. I tell you what, the only thing no for me about the Raiders is Davis's hairline. That's about it. That's everything else looks good. Let it go. I can't. Somebody let it go. went off on that. Was it Gruden that finally ripped people about his but- hairline? About yeah, about Davis's airline. Oh, I've heard that he keeps it just to fuck with people, so people keep talking shit because he get like gets high off of that. He likes the attention. No shit. Like hello, like what else would he be doing that for? He doesn't do it on purpose. Like to, no, he does it on purpose. I mean, he doesn't do it like for to make the cover of GQ. Um, or maybe he will. Maybe it's one of those things. Yeah, so, they have a pretty pretty solid schedule to keep this going we did you're right we did talk about it we said yep. that there was a very good possibility that they'd be eventually six and two mm-hmm. uh and then even the second half of their season they who do have a big game is that Ooh, is that the thanksgiving game raiders and cowboys the cowboys second i hope not uh november 25th that's thanksgiving yeah that is thanksgiving. oh that's a good one and then yeah uh they end the season denver Indianapolis and the possibly good Chargers. So, okay, yeah, I agree with you. Contenders, Carolina. What do you think about your boys over there with your boy Sam Donald? Now that he's not under Adam Gase, contenders or pretenders? I feel like if McCaffrey can stay at least healthy 70 percent of the season, they're contenders. But I what will say this, Christian. I'm out for a couple of weeks right now. McCaffrey. I said 60 or 70% of the season. He still has that chance. I'm going to say that they are borderline contenders, but maybe pretenders if McCaffrey gets hurt again or stays hurt. I'm going to unfortunately go pretenders, and I think there's actually a good possibility that the Panthers are going to be three and three in about three weeks. So. Well, they couldn't be three and three before then, so right. Just saying, Dick. They got the Cowboys, the Eagles, and the Vikings. That's gonna Dude, be they are bit... gonna they the Eagles is a W for them. They might be four and two. Okay, four and two. I'll give you that. You're right. Maybe I'm living off of Hertz's first week. Uh yeah, but you they talked definitely... about last week. <laughs> I think they definitely beat the Giants. They beat not after that, they've got a pretty good schedule. Giants, Falcons, Panthers. Uh oh. I forgot to put these guys on the list, but they're three and zero. Also, there is five teams that are three and zero. These ones are the ones that I'm kind of got the. I'm not so sure the most about. Uh, not so fast, my friend. The Arizona Cardinals. Oh, Denver's you mean didn't are... I like pick them in the season to like actually have a chance? I'm gonna you say did. contenders. I'm gonna say contenders. I am too, just because of the fact that that offense is going to get points. And they did this last year, but it's another year. It's another year for Murray. It's another year for Cliff. Uh, Our defense is going to adjust. And I mean, they didn't necessarily tear up the Chiefs. um, I'm sorry, not the Chiefs. The Jaguars last week, they had that weird 109-yard kick return. But I think they're going to do enough. Like they've scored 38, 34, 31. Uh, this next week, though, this is going to tell us a lot because they, they play the Rams. And I'm pretty sure I said that the Los Angeles Rams were going to play the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I'm not so sure about one of those teams right now, and it's not the Rams that I'm not so sure about because they look good, like scary good. Like Stafford found his home, and it is magic. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. I really think that that the best matchup out of that's going to be the Cardinals offense versus that Rams defense. Like watching Aaron Donald chase Kyler Murray around is going to be very entertaining. And we'll get it twice this year. 
And dude, I'm sipping the Kool Aid hard. Like, I want to buy a Rams hat. And it's not because I'm a bandwagon or because I love the team, but those colors look freaking sweet together. Like, if you get away from the weird, like that tan home jersey oh, that yeah. they wear, it's like a gray. Um, but I saw some Rams hats in the stands at that last game. I was like, those are nice. Yeah. You know, they're, it's almost like, like the Angelo State Rams. Like, aren't they the same color? Is that school still around? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think they might have lost accreditation when Tech did, but I don't know. Yeah, or maybe you were just like, this place is so bad, I've got to go to College Station. Um, I mean, you're not did wrong. Did you see Jalen Ramsey show up in the mariachi outfit? No. Oh, it looks sharp. He showed up in a blue and yellow mariachi outfit. It was nice. In, in the car, too, of course. Um, it was just it was legit. So, I'm liking the Rams. Um, I, I, I don't know about the Chiefs getting to the Super Bowl, but the Rams, I'm they might be there. Um, and then last but not least, you're no, Denver. it's the last and the least. The little P pretenders, the Broncos. Ooh, talk about a little shot to the jug for them. I'm looking up who they I know I think they're the team that like they won three games against three teams that haven't won a game. You mean like got combined 0 9? Yeah. Let me ask our uh, producer if he can look that up real quick. Producer, could you look that up real quick? Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, they have beat the Giants, the Jaguars, and the Jets. So, yeah, that's them. They'll lose next week. They play the Ravens, and then they play the Broncos, and then they play the Raiders. So another team that could potentially be 4-2 and two soon. Um, all right, so to recap, Raiders, we agree. Contenders, Carolina, I said pretender. You said contender, right? I said barely a contender. They're on they're on the borderline. Rams definite contender. Broncos definite pretenders. And then Cardinals. I'm gonna say contenders. Holy shit. Like the two top headlines today are like first off, this was the biggest, like, duh. Can you believe? Can you believe that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game is the highest selling ticket all season at New England. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. I figured it would be the, the Jets, one of the Jets games. Yeah. I mean, first I saw that. Then I saw, like, I didn't even click on it, but I saw like Brady said that Belichick and his and their divorce was handled perfect. Um, and then I also saw, like, of course, Brady's pumped to be there. I'm waiting. I haven't checked, but I'm sure he's talking so much shit. And he just wants to go in there. And he wants to just, just I don't I don't even know, save just beat him, like, good enough. I don't know what he's going to do to them. I don't. I mean, yeah, I expect him to go in there and demolish him. Didn't he make a quote, something to the effect of, like, I know what they're doing this week. I know their schedule. Or I know their routine. I know their planning. I know what their game plan is going to be. Like he knows everything about them. He knows Belichick. The the advantage is in Brady's favor, not Belichick's favor in this one. Well, Belichick's gonna know how he gets stretched out before the game. He knows who his trainer is. He knows his breakfast regimen, possibly, and he knows the ingredients to that purple shake that everyone says is delicious. So let's not just count all our baskets yet. All right. Um, I don't even think that's how that saying goes, but what happens when Mac and the boys get the W? Hell freezes over. I don't. <laughs> I think that's what has to happen. I mean, this is the NFL. Nobody's like this. Is in Alabama versus you know whoever they put who was it Southern Mississippi this last week. Like this is the NFL. Things can happen. Sports Center is going to not shut the fuck up about it for not just a week, for two weeks. It'll be, has Brady lost it? Is Belichick better than Brady? Like, it's going to be all of these bullshit titles. And at the end of the day, dude, it doesn't matter. Even if the Patriots win, it doesn't matter. It does not affect Brady's Super Bowl chances. It does not change the fact that Brady has one more Super Bowl than Belichick. Belichick's not getting another. Mark my words. Not going to get another. Brady might. Doesn't matter. Well, believe it or not, Tampa Bay's favored. Uh, the spread is minus seven for Tampa Bay. Uh, Luke has been talking to Portnoy to learn his bet- betting uh, rules. Actually, I haven't learned a 
anything more than what we what you taught me last week. Come um, on, dude, I was trying to give you credit. Come on. But it's cold weather. I don't know. I don't know. It's scary. Wicked scary. Actually, the matchup predictor has 56 to 43%. So like I said, now the stats are in Brady's favor just a little bit. 10 touchdowns, two interceptions to Mac Jones's two touchdowns and three interceptions. But uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna you want me to start the predictions and go out on a limb? Sure. I'm gonna say that the worst possible thing that could possibly happen is Brady gets hurt. And then I'm gonna say if he doesn't get hurt, Tampa Bay wins. I think Tampa Bay wins no matter what. I might eat those words. I don't think he's going to hurt. I think the worst possible thing that happens other than him getting hurt is he throws more picks than touchdowns. Dude, if he were to get hurt, that'd be like McGregor getting hurt in his last fight. Like you would just deflate the shit out of everything. I'm going to argue that Brady has a little more class than McGregor though. So uh, fuck you. Who the fuck is this guy? Um, I don't even know the last time Brady got hurt. Well, Brady has two rules named after him. So I think it was when they went low on him and broke his leg. You think if he gets hurt, we jinx him and we make national headlines because we predicted it? And is that good publicity? I mean, he was on the Madden cover this year. Ooh, right on. Yeah, I'll go Tampa also. Now? Do you do we owe more to Brady in in his gloriness, or is, are we good to move on and talk scotch? Oh, I already bought the Tom Brady jersey. Oh, so. okay, okay. One more thing: Brady and Belichick. Do they mid midfield before and after the game? Yeah. And does the conversation go? No. It's like it's like. It's been long enough post a divorce to his own comment that he can still be civil. Hey, Tom, I hope you're doing really good, Tom. Thanks. Great game. Of course, you had to go and beat me and leave New England. But all right, Tom, fuck off. Bye. Like that? Yeah. Cool. I think it's going to go exactly like that. As long as the kids are okay. Yeah. Tell the kids kids that that Grandpa Bill says hi and and love them. And okay, I'll see you next time. Bye. That's them on the phone. Okay. Uh, what is in the nose of that glass? I'll tell you what, man. Scotch is dangerous. It sneaks up on you. It's so, so perfect for the weather coming up. It really is. It's a by fire. Chimenea. Drink some scotch. Drink some bourbon. Just get drunk in general. All right, so I will confirm the back of the label. Honey, sweetness, maybe some sherry. I don't know. I don't really pick up sherry. I'm not the sherry expert, but I would say it's very similar. Like the fruitiness is is very like red winey, like a sweet red wine. The peat does not hit you. Like like we said, it's frugal. Space is typically frugal with peat. That's going to change in the palate. We'll get into that. But ultimately, there's always this like aura about scotch that's very leathery and mature. I think that's probably the best word for it. Like when you smell scotch, it doesn't smell like college. It doesn't smell like a frat party. It smells like a smoking jacket in a cigar room. Like it smells like, like you're an adult. And that's probably how I classify this. I feel like this is a very, very stereotypical adult, mature smoke pipe smoking whiskey. Nicely done. Um, I definitely get the honey that it was talking about when I talked about space I'd not too smoky, but I'm actually getting a little bourbony maple syrup in the back here. I'm really digging it. 
fruits there. Apple, apple jelly, like an apple sauce, more of an apple sauce. Yeah, maple syrup, a little apple sauce in there. And I really do like that, that sweet, sweet maple syrup kind of, kind of has a little spice and cinnamon to it because of that, which would go hand in hand with the apples. How you like them apples? I like it. Spicy apple. Ooh, that's not bad from an airplane bottle, buddy. Does the airplane bottle thing, do you do, like, they have Buffalo Trace in airplane bottles. Do it's the think, same liquor. It's Okay, so you're, you're that guy. Yeah. That's good. You're not like, oh, it's different because it's in a glass bottle that's tiny. If it's in plastic, maybe, maybe. This is classy. This is glass. Shivers, yeah. Better for the environment. <laughs> no words. Okay. Why don't you give me a grade there, buddy? Ah, it's so hard to compare to other things. But if I'm just saying like B. So if I'm gonna make a comparison to last week. And Scotch and like, because like Chivas is what? Like, if you had to say it's the, is it like the Elijah Craig of bourbon? The like, wild turkey. Like, okay. Okay. That's fair enough. Like, I want to give this a B plus on the nose just naturally because it's sweet. It's got some similar bourbon features, which I'm trying not to do, but it's just happening. Like hey, I could really whiskey, whiskey, man. enjoy I, I enjoy the notes on this one quite a bit. I'm gonna give it a B plus. All right. Cool. Give a little B plus from my granddad's scotch. Love it. All right. So with that, we're gonna move into our third dram. And we're gonna, of course, talk what else? What else would we want to talk about besides NFL football? Hockey. That's not uh, what we're going to talk about. European League Soccer? Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go! We're going to talk about the real college football. All right. So I'm just going to just rip the Band-Aid off with this one. We talked about it. It sucked. Yeah. Keep do it. Just do, do it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, bring it. Bring it. The Arkansas a and game. I don't know what to say, man. I mean, I'm not surprised. And I think if I remember our last episode well enough, I was I was nervous. I was really nervous. I gave us a 10-point favor. We lost by 10. It could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. And owed to our defense. I think they actually played a decent game. But our offense just could not, you know, like, could not get it going. And it was a heartbreaker. My wife and I were talking the other night and talking about how this time of year – Everything's football. Saturdays are football. Sunday, I watch Red Zone all day. It's football, right? You know, Monday night's football. Thursday night's football. You know, we record. And it's football, football, football. My wife's like, well, I always think that way until, like, we lose. And then, and then I, like, stop caring as much throughout the rest of the season. I'm like, ah, that's a good point. Usually, like, we're 5-0, and oh, so it's like week six, we play Alabama, and we lose. But this means so early in the season. I mean, it was nine straight wins, and we got a little spoiled. So this week's going to be tough, too. I mean, that Mississippi State game is is not one to look past. I just don't know that our offense can, like, get rolling. I mean, if their quarterback gets hurt in the first quarter, you guys are rocking and rolling. Sure. No, I mean, it was exactly what we said, and the whole country said, if they let Arkansas run, it's going to be bad. And they just had to game manage. Eh. They got behind fast. They couldn't rely on that game management. Um, but... Yep. I mean, I told you, Arkansas looks pretty dang good. And unfortunately, Tech just signed on to play them in 2030. So whew, after they've had about three national championships, they'll be ready for us. Maybe in the SEC. That, yeah. George, that Georgia game is going to be good. Arkansas and Georgia, is that this week? Yeah, six versus two matchup. It's going to be good. Damn, why didn't I have that on the matchups up for this week? Missed that one. Uh yeah, and then it, it's going to depend on how healthy that quarterback is. I mean, he had some huevos coming back into that game, but as if I'm a coach and I'm watching him run like that at the end of the game, I'm like, 
ooh, cringeworthy, man. Uh, but definitely quite the uh, performance for him. The, yeah, that long bomb at the beginning of the game, that was a little dagger that they had to try to rebound from, and it took a while. Um, all right, we won't beat a dead horse on that one. Uh, Notre Dame. Speaking, I was going to say, speaking of dead horses. What? Notre Dame. Oh. Uh, Notre Dame over Wisconsin. Meh. Cool deal. Soldier Field. Or no, was it Wrigley Field? Soldier. 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 Um, cool deal. Uh, I didn't give two shits, but well, sure. third stringer, technically third stringer, but the better option comes in. The dude looks five foot ten. Rudy comes in, wins the game. I heard five foot ten is the new six foot, so yeah, that's true too. Uh, I know how much you just don't want to talk about Notre Dame, so we'll just say, hey, good job, Notre Dame. But unfortunately, I got a feeling I'll hold that on for a second. Um, yes, Dick, you called. We had our upsets of the week. I said Rutgers over Michigan for a while there, it was looking close. I don't know how good or bad Michigan is now after that game. I think you said that exact statement, may have just stole it from you, don't care. And then you did. Oh, I picked them oh, upset over Clemson on their down year. Shocker. Congratulations. Wow. God, you really are a sore fucking loser. You know that? <laughs> I picked Clemson when Trevor Lawrence was gone. Woo, I'm so ballsy. I went out there on a limb. Congratulations, dick. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Moving on. Um, Michael Wilbon spit fire. At Lane Kiffin this week. Yeah, you're going to have to give me more on this. I didn't catch it all. Uh, I saw the articles and saw, like, the Kiffin responses. I didn't see the actual, like, segment on PTI, but apparently Wilbon was, like, just calling Kiffin a joke. Like, that he's just a big joke and things like that. Like, that's it in a nutshell. That he's just a big old joke with everything that's gone on uh, in his coaching past. Isn't that like a pot in a kettle situation? Like, is Michael Wilbon allowed to call anybody a joke? Well, see, that's where I happen to appreciate Michael Wilbon and have always put him up there high on, like, the journalist list for me. I mean, give me a reason why not. Because he's a Cubs homer that he lets it get in the way of his actual reporting. I mean, I don't know. I've just never been a Wilbon fan, man. He's my least favorite half of PTI. Oh, of course. I mean, I'm you're not saying I like PTI. A fun sucker. Mike I Wilbon forgot. is not fun. You're a Colin guy. Pound turd. Um. Yeah. So then Kiffin like like went on like replied like an emoji, a tweet like "I'll pray for you." There's no time for hate or something. And then I'll pray he went, for you. And then he was like, "I'll." Big way to go on a limb by taking the number one team in the country, something like that, some tweet like that. But that, that, like, do you think Kiffin's a joke? Like, do you think I, I, I will say this if you're a Tennessee fan, yes, I absolutely, you, 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 you deserve to hate the guy still for what he did. Uh, but like outside of that, like the success that he's had recently, I think he's made up for it. And I think I I've agree said it quite a few times. I think what he's doing at Old Miss is fun and exciting, and I like it, and I'm rooting for them, and I think they're the team this year uh, to 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 make some noise. Like I think he's made up for the rough patch that he had in that Tennessee USC era. Pretty big rough patch. I I will say this: I have grown to like Lane over the years. I really really liked his dad. I mean, who didn't? And Give me that face. I don't like this dad. Jesus. Do you like oh, Monty Kiffin? Like one of the greatest you, defense yeah, coordinators of all time? Monty Kiffin. Just a square, square dude. Just awesome. Good guy. I'm sorry. Um, I have all the things to mention. <laughs> yes, we know Lane Kiffin is Monty Kiffin. Sorry. <laughs> Moving on. No. Okay. So that's my perspective. All right. I like Lane Kiffin now. He's grown on me over the over the years. It doesn't bother me as a coach Ole Miss. I do agree. He does bring fun to a school and an organization that needs fun. That school's needed fun for a long time. And they finally got it. I, I think there's such parallels between, yeah, 
You're doing the big L on your face. Yeah. Um, I think there's, Sharksman, get it? <laughs> you know, I, I knew what it was. Uh, I think there's such parallels between Sark and Kiffin, like hard parallels, right? Kiffin is why. What I'm, are those parallels? <laughs> you tell me. I mean, they both got fired from USC for weird reasons. They both kind of fell on their ass and became. Well, I'm not going to get into it. They both became Alabama offensive coordinators. What, what? Shame, shame. What? Nothing. Continue. No, tell me what. Tell me why shame, shame. No, I just you know. I thought Michael Wilbon was being judgmental. Jeez. <laughs> I just I think uh, if anybody's a joke out of the two of those, it's Sark. So I'll just leave it at that. That that's such a Sark is getting. He's an innocent bystander here that just happens to be wearing the colors. Pretty sure he created. Like. A, he committed a crime last weekend, and you're just going to look past that. What was that? What was that what was last weekend? <laughs> was know. that last weekend? What what was what was last weekend? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was the 72 hour binge I went on after that game that I don't remember much of it, but. Yeah, I guess they beat Tech. No, no, no. It wasn't 72. That. It was 70. 70, not 72. Oh, sorry. 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 Yeah, that happened. Uh, hey, what are you going to do? Um, but I am calling it now. I, what I did text you after that game, do you think that's a possibility what I texted you? If Matt Wells, who I'm not saying is a bad guy and it's all his fault, does get the boot, the guy I told you, does that make sense? And it's funny because I saw a list yesterday that was like, who's coaching tech next year? 15 possible candidates. And number one was Matt Wells. Like he could still be there. I'm not saying I don't want him there, but the guy that I mentioned wasn't even on the list. Charlie strong. No, but there was, there was people on that list. Like Bill Callahan. There was Bill Callahan's going to yes. come out of retirement. Yes. To coach uh, tech. Oh, who else was on there? It was a, uh, who was it? Well, it's just fucking. Who did you think it was? Tom Herman? Yeah, it takes you. Makes sense. Who's had success? Yeah, he had success before Texas. He did a hell of a job at Houston. Okay. Oh, that and that powerhouse Big Twelve school. I'm sorry, I, I forgot who they were. For a second. You shut your face. You shut your face, and he's he's a big reason that they probably got that invite. And then he's like, okay, maybe I went I mean, too big. Maybe I went way out, like too big to start. I need to tone I mean, down a little bit. Started Houston's as, coach you know, is a former very successful West Virginia head coach. So, I mean. He's he's a – who, Bill Murray? Oh, Bill Murray coach. over there? <laughs> uh, oh, he's doing so good there. Oh, fantastic. Don't get me started on Holgerson, okay? You would love to have him as next head coach. No, I no, I would not. I've hated every time that rumors come up. Don't get me started. Anyway, moving on. Her yeah, gym, I'm her. calling it now. Turn Tom Herman. Right. And everyone's gonna be like, oh, but he sucked at UT. <laughs> Who hasn't lately? Let's see if Sark, but he just whooped Texas Tech. Congratulations. He just did good against he did good things against Texas Tech's defense. Congratulations. <laughs> moving on. Upcoming week, we've got three, three, oh, well, four. I didn't, I, I, I just happened to miss the Arkansas Georgia game. Ole Miss versus Alabama, Cincinnati versus Notre Dame, Baylor versus OK State, and you've got your Georgia Arkansas game. Are we doing a pick them? Let's do a pick them, but let me, I, I want to see how. I don't, need, I didn't even know the Georgia Arkansas game was on, and it's at, 11 a.m. Gee whiz, they're going to be partying hard over there in Athens. Is that where they're playing? Nope. Yes, possibly. I don't know. It's Athens. Yes, Athens. They're going to be partying hard over there. They're going to have those rec tech grills fired up, and they're going to have that liquor flowing with breakfast. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Arkansas. Let's keep that piggy going. Big Suey, let's get it. Uh, Georgia is a 90% uh, predicted winner for that game. The spread is Georgia minus 18. Man, they're not thinking too highly of your Aggies there, buddy. Uh, but yeah, I like the Arkansas. Oh, you know what the you know what it could be? 
I haven't heard anything about their quarterback. If he's not playing, then that's an absolute, that's a different, that's a game changer. Nope. KJ Jefferson brings usual size and dangerous runner and passer. So he's playing. Uh, I'll stick with it. I'll go Arkansas. Ole Miss versus Alabama. Were you pausing for dramatic effect? Because we both know who we're picking. Okay. Bama. Okay. I'm going to save my pick. Let's wait a second for my pick. Let's save my pick there, buddy. Cincinnati versus Notre Dame. I'm going to say Cincy. Yeah, I'm going Cincy too. I think Notre Dame's rode the wave for a couple of years. Luck of the Irish getting through the regular season. I don't think that's going to happen this week. I think Cincinnati is that team that Notre Dame has lost to in the past. Are you finally Kansas picking a new religion? To. No, I'm just going to have to go to confession. Okay. Um, Baylor, OK State. I really just put oh. this game on there, but did you hear? Oh, did you hear about the big prank that Baylor pulled on OK State for before the game? I did hear that about I, that 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 bear. They put a teddy bear at midfield. God, the ball's on them. That was not just a teddy bear, dude. That was like a care bear, and it had plenty of hugs to share. Was it a teeny baby? I don't what know were those called? Titty babies? A peeny baby? Teeny beanies. Teeny weeny beanies. What were they called? Beanie babies. Beanie babies. There we go. Way off. Samsonite. Titty okay. babies? Really? Uh, <laughs> um... So was that your nickname in sixth grade? I'm sorry. That was so funny. Not even Scott's got me to laugh at that one, buddy. Way to go, Andy Dalton. Uh, Upsets of the week. I'm going to let you go first, my friend. What's your... We didn't even pick OK State or Baylor. OK State? Uh, I don't care. Uh, I'm going to say that the teddy bear does the work and the Baylor wins. All right. Um, you want me to go first? Upsets of the week. I've got two. One's not really an upset, though. Even though one team is favored or ranked over the other, the other team is favored. Um, LSU over Auburn. Auburn is ranked in this matchup. I'm going to take LSU. The um, spread is three and a half points for LSU. The over under is 55. I'm going to take the under in that bad boy. And then the real upset I'm going to call, and this is just probably hate driven, but it's also because of the movie we discussed earlier. Because Hey, he goes to Rutgers. He's a good guy. I'm going to take Rutgers over OSU. OSU is a 15-point favorite in this, and I'm going to take the under of 56 and a half. My uncle said I couldn't ever be a varsity athlete, and that really affected me. Um, Oh, I see what you're doing. You're riding my coattail by picking Rutgers this week. And yeah, but I'm going to pick them You're to win going out on a limb again. Oh, I'm picking the LSU Tigers, all of that. A little itty bitty team can't win a game. God, you're such a safe guy. They are they are vulnerable to sissy blue. Mm, I don't know what that means. You're hearing it here. You're hearing it now. My upset of the week is that Bryant Denny Stadium is going to be a little bit more quiet this Saturday. When the old miss, I don't know if they're still called rebels or allowed to be called rebels or what the hell their mascot is these days, running. Rebels, it's a pair. Go in, and they beat the Alabama Crimson Tide. And Lane Kiffin is going to party so hard that he's going to get fired. Possibly, we've got a two thirty kickoff. It's going to be rocking in Oxford by six thirty. Fuck, is it a two thirty CBS game? It, I'm not going to lie, dude. I can't I can't stand the CBS theme to Texas A&M games. It just doesn't. It doesn't. Fit. I hate 230 CBS games all the time. They always suck. The announcers are horrible. They've been horrible forever. I can't Why? even remember. This the last Saturday, they just kept going. <laughs> I don't think anybody does that even at Arkansas. The thing that's a tech thing. I don't know. They're the Razorbacks. I don't know what's. There's not to get. They say big suey. Don't y'all hiss in yeah. AM? Because that makes sense. I mean, that's old old bowl. A lot of the new bowl people are actually starting to boo, which is a whole thing. But yeah. Oh, you don't boo. That's so unsportsmanlike. Anyway, yeah. I'm calling it out. Old Miss 
The lame train's coming into town. He's going to put his signature on the season. He's going to put the signature on his career, and then he's going to peace out. You want to make a friendly wager on this? A bottle wager? Uh, I just lost a wager this last week. I already owe somebody pluckers. What kind of bottle are we talking here? Because I've never got my Jack Daniels bottle from last oh, no, year. I still owe you that. Let's put um, that back on the uh, Never mind. I no, no, I owe you that. So. <laughs> um, bottle wager, huh? I mean, I do have to come visit you here pretty soon. So that's what I was going to say. I tell you what, first glass when you come visit and we go down the street to Whiskey Cake. All right. I'm down with that. You down? Yeah. I'm down. All right. I Happy here down. I come. Yeah. We get lit AF. Uh, all right. Is that it? Is that about all we got to say about college football? That's all we got to say about that. Okay. Well, then let's get into a little bit more whiskey. I'm going to have to open up my second airplane bottle. Oh, how many people do you think have opened up a Chivas airplane bottle on a plane recently with all the shit going on? Well, the fact that you can't get served alcohol in planes right now, it's probably been a while. Shut your face. Yeah. That's a lie. Nobody's serving. Why? Because of COVID and people are already unruly as hell in the air. But alcohol kills everything. But alcohol makes people wild, bro. Maybe you know what it would do? People would get fucking along on those planes for a change. People would start singing. I you know what life was like to be on a plane in the 1970s. People were smoking, people were drinking, people were high-fiving. They were doing that thing where they joined that club that I'm still not so sure what that means. Like life was it's good. The Denver they thing, just isn't need it? Need to do that. Country road. Take me home. I don't know why I'm doing I'm doing a British accent because the end of the Kingsman movie. But anyway, I just just relax. You're up in the sky. Yeah. COVID's not up in the air. That's science. It's down in the ground. Get some bleach. You'd be fine. Bleach it. Okay. All right. I'm going to go first because you're pouring yours. And I've been drinking mine, so I don't want to lose this. There's the honey. The cherry's there. A little bit of oakiness, but it's not nearly as oaky as we see on a bourbon. In the back end, you get like, this is what we've always talked about with like grassiness and Texas whiskeys, because technically Texas whiskeys are actually single malts. You get this like, grassy you may call it peat it's not it's a little smoky but it's more like earthy like i'm gonna sweet dirt if that's a thing not in a bad way like in a very good way but definitely earthy like peat it's not smoky though but possibly i mean it's a grassy earthy however you want to say like peat to me a thousand times this season uh okay. Well, I have I have one other thing. Hold on. Scotch, got scotch. I love scotch. <laughs> so the one thing I noticed right off the bat with this is it comes in watered down, but then it's like somebody lighted some kerosene or something on your tongue, and it just goes. Whoosh. Um, it's got some heat on the backside. God, this Scotch thing is going to be so tough to distinguish. Like it, ta- it tastes like a watered down version of what I had last week. But I'm going to try here. If you're looking for the usual Scotch notes, there's a little cigar smoke in there. Little leather, maybe, but that fire, that fire just kind of puts it all out and brings in a high ethanol taste there. Um, The honey's not there too much. It kind of has like a cough drop effect. Like I'm kind of getting that on my tongue. But it's still like scotch is so weird because bourbon, you say apple pie, you say maple syrup, and those things are you want to enjoy. And you're not surprised when you say like, oh, I can. Everything that I just said does not sound that great, but it is fucking working in this glass. Like, I am loving what I'm drinking right now. 
like you say things like tar boots leather the inside of a wooden box but it's so delicious i forgot about that episode where you talked about licking a box it was my change box from when i was a little kid and we had a whole discussion and you were like no that's not that they wouldn't make it out of redwood and you were like it was probably like cherry wood and i was like dick i don't give a shit i think that's exactly how that conversation went uh, isn't that how like 98 percent of our conversations go oh absolutely but you're right scotch is so damn dangerous like i'm gonna chug this whole glass and i'm gonna feel great but the way I describe it, people would be like, uh, no. If you know, then you know. My left arm's possibly numb right now, but I'm still drinking. So many questions, not enough time to answer them. All right, let's go ahead and move into that fourth dram. And we are going to bring back the what in the world of whiskey. So as we talked about in our last episode, we will be bringing this out throughout. I think it's a good closer, but we're going to be talking a lot of football. I did spend some time up at Garrison Brothers last weekend, and I want to tell you a little bit about that, Kurt. Um, but first off, did I send you any pictures from that that little excursion? Uh, the ones you posted on the gram. Right, right. Yeah, because Nettie put this up on the ground for us. Um, dude, it was a pretty cool experience. I mean, overall, like I haven't done a whole lot of distillery tours. You know, we're starting to do a little more of them. I showed up there on a Friday afternoon and they were getting ready for the release of the Cowboy Bourbon the next morning. So I got there like at 2.30, 3 o'clock, and it's just popping there. Like there's people all over the place just there for the day or whatever. It must be nice to have Fridays off, right? And okay. Dude, they're so they're selling drams like like actual glens, you know. And I, I sent you some picture of those of single barrel or their small batch, three dollars and twenty five cents. Say what? I was like, can I get a hundred of these? And you can you put them in box? Shit! I know. Just take a bunch of those. <laughs> That's but they also had like old fashions that were like frozen. They came in bags. Like it was, it was pretty cool. Dude, you know what I did see them post that I'm kind of like, I was like, damn it. Dick could have grabbed me some. Did they have their cigars there? Uh, I didn't see any. Oh, oh you know okay. what they did in the, they, I think they did in the little shop, but I didn't grab any. Ah, okay. Those look, those look tasty. Yeah. They had small batch, single barrel in honeydew all for sale in the shop. And they've got like a bunch of shit, but I like the fact that like they're starting to get pretty big. And if you don't know a lot about Dan Garrison, please look him up. I mean, he was trained at Buffalo Trace. His first, um, the first still that they still have on the property, he actually purchased from Elmer T. Lee like in 1989 or 91 or something like that. Um, I did not know that association. Yeah. Yeah. So he was trained at Buffalo Trace by that team and decided he was going to open up his own thing. Got 300 investors. They're called the old 300. Each gave like 5,000 bucks. Um, and you can still buy into the old 300 club. Um, and you get like 5,000 bucks, get 50% off bottles, merch, all this other stuff. You get like, you know, day before release. So we ended up hanging out with a bunch of people that were all 300 people. And one of them um, is actually like, he's pretty, pretty in with the garrisons. Um, we got to have like a backstage tour because you can pay for tours to go up there. We got to have like a backstage tour where we all hopped in. Um, like five five of us dudes hopped in this employee's car and like drove up the mountain is what they call it the hill to where the distillery is and we got to go like behind the scenes into the bottling room take pictures in the distillery i got to stick my finger in the mash bill a bung? actually yeah next what in the bunghole no 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 i in the the mash bill like the vats that they have like the, the actual mash like fermenting i got to stick my oh, finger yeah, in yeah. and eat some of the like oatmeal stuff it's pretty cool um it was it was honestly probably like I almost say once in a lifetime, but it was definitely an experience that if you've never had a chance to do, just pay it. I mean, I don't know what the paid tour looks like, but you get to see all the same places. It's pretty freaking cool. So did you wear your some merch? Wear some merch, bro. Did I order like did I wear any of our fourth ram merch? Yeah. Nah, I forgot. Oh. My, my one hat, I forgot. I know. Yeah. Fucking loser. You know, what we didn't know what was going on is Miami and Virginia are playing, and Miami's about to kick a game-winning field goal. Sweet. 
two shitty games on TV turned in pretty entertaining. And was... holy crap, he doinked it. He doinked it. A 33-yard attempt. He almost fell. What the hell happened there? And Manny Diaz may be out of a job in a couple weeks. That'll be an interesting opening. What's poor Tathan? What's he going to do? Who? Tate Martell. Oh, he's at UNLV right now. Oh, yeah. He went back home. Got but he's like in a boot or something. Golly, I'm waiting for them to show the replay of that kick because he literally like, he almost fell. Oh, oh, here it is. There's a snap. Oh, okay. He got, he just, he just missed it. And one of the Virginia players went sliding underneath him and he kind of got caught up on him. All right. Well, the U is unfortunately not the U. Uh, okay. So sorry to interrupt that great story of you and completely missing the opportunity to wear your merch. What are you going to do with those barrels? I didn't even talk about the barrels yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I ended up going through, um, you know, the line the next day, got my, my pretty little bouncing baby boy of cowboy bourbon. Uh, I'll talk about that here in a second, but yeah, we, we picked up a few barrels while we were there and you could just like 35 bucks a barrel. Um, me and my buddy bought a few of them and I bought one. And we loaded them in the back of my truck. And as we're like loading them up, one of the girls that works there came up and she's like, Hey, so you know, when you get home, you can actually put a Pyrex or something underneath it, roll it over, like pull the bunghole out, roll it over, and you'll get barrel proof cowboy bourbon. Is that is what cowboy bourbon is? You'll get it straight out of that. There's probably like a bottle, maybe half a bottle, maybe a bottle left in there. And we're like, No fucking way. But her husband's one of the distillers. So we're like, Okay. Um, so when I came home, I did that dude. And I got about, yeah, about 350 milliliters of cowboy bourbon out of one of those, uh, yeah, out of one of those, uh, barrels. So 35 bucks comes out to about $88 of cowboy bourbon. Not bad. So how many of those, bur- how many barrel, like, was it just like a field of them? Uh, it was five pallets, double stacked. And then they had mini ones too. Oh, nice. Okay. And you had a sip from the glass and you had a sip from that barrel. Yeah. How similar or different were they? So it's literally the same whiskey. It tastes very, very similar. Obviously, the stuff in the glass is a bit more filtered. Um, and I, I filtered out a lot of the char that came out with, came out of the barrel. But oh, palette-wise, palette wise, it's pretty much the same, man. Yeah, nice. you got to... See, I think now cowboy bourbon is barrel proof, but this technically is barrel proof single barrel. So it's a little bit different than the than the blended. So nice. super cool. Um, but thoughts on the first pour of cowboy bourbon, dude? Like, I know I have felt I felt about mine. How did you feel about yours last year? And are you looking forward to the sample I'm gonna bring you? Uh it was it was very good. I would have to absolutely go back and listen to see what I rated. I believe I rated it real high. It was just, I think the only knock on it was like, that's a $220 bottle of bourbon. I don't know how much you paid there at the distillery, but at the time, um, yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's rough, but it was very good. And it was one of those things that 150 delicious, 220, like, oof. Uh, but flavor was there. If you take away the price thing, it, it's a cool bottle. It's a cool story. It's unique. It's very Texas. And the, and the flavors, it was strong, good. And it was sweet too, kind of similar to their Balmori, which I I love. And I think that's at the rice price point. I think that was like a 160 bottle. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was good stuff. Good, 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 good. Yeah, the two twenty price tag is a little, little stiff, but I think it's I think it's worth it depending on what you're buying it for. Like I'm buying it for the story, you're buying it to share with friends. It's probably unlike any other flavor profile you're going to get. I mean, it's 130 some odd proof, 31 I think what mine is. So I don't think there's anything negative to say about it. I wish it was a single barrel, but uh, I already have that now. So cool. Uh, speaking of this was kind of like the introduction to release season if you will at least here in the state of texas there's multiple releases 
there. And I'll probably go to a couple more Garrison Brothers ones. But old Kentucky release season is coming up. The winter. The best, most happiest, most amazing time of the year. What are you looking forward to? Hmm. I feel like we were so close yet so far last year just because we got in that one raffle. But yeah. birthday bourbon. Old Forester. Old Forester. I, I did my homework before. Um, I don't know if this is a release that's already been out, but I was reading they have an Old Forester 117 series. The high angel share, mm-hmm. where it's like bottles where the volume has been really ta- been taken out of them because of the angel share, and it's like at a one ten proof. Like we've, I've become quite the old Forester fan within the last year. One ten, you're talking my sweet spot. Sounds like heaven. I don't. I have no one other than looking at it and seeing it on that release calendar. I don't know much about it, but I would love to run into it. Uh, and then you had asked me the other day if I was looking forward to the second part of the ooh, Bengals just kicked a game-winning field goal. Sorry, Trevor Lawrence. You just lost as many games as you did in high school and college. Um, the New Makers Mark FAE Series 2 or whatever whatever the Wood uh, Series is. Yes, I enjoyed the first one of this year so much that that's going to be a constant buy if I can get my hands on it. Um, unless one of them just disappoints me, but I, I just don't see that happening from Maker's Mark, and I don't let myself <laughs> let that happen because I'm such an MM fanboy. Uh, George T. Stag, I know you're obviously going to mention the, the um, antique collection there. George T. Stag, that's a bottle I've had, and if I can get it again, I absolutely will. Anything on that antique collection, I'm, I'm not going to turn down. Um, maybe some Blanton's, bro. Uh, but yeah, other than that, just um, those are those are my uh quick list. What about yourself? I'm not gonna lie, if I said Blanton's for MSRP, it's been like two and a half years since I've had one. I'd probably grab one. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I could let myself do that. I mean, you could do it. You just have to be quiet about it. Yeah, probably. I, I probably. So yeah, B Tech dude. If I can get one on a list somewhere for MSRP or damn near, you know I'm doing it. Um, that 220 though for that cowboy bourbon is the most I've ever spent on a bottle. And that was that was my wife said, I told her I was going. She's like, I was like, it's gonna cost a bit. Do you want to know how much it costs? And she said, No. And I said, Okay, cool. No problem. Came back with it. I forgot to tell you this. Came back with it. I did the barrel flip and I did the math on it. Because I think I got 300 milliliters and I did the math and I was like, okay, that's $88 a cowboy bourbon. And she looks at me and she goes, how much was the bottle? I was like, you said you didn't want to know. <laughs> and she's like, is it seven? I was, she's like, it was $220. I was like, you said yeah, you didn't want to know. Smart to, you're like you, you gave her too much info. Like you, I, I guess the second you said that, I was like, I know where this is going. Yeah, so um, it's, I would have told her she wanted to know, but she said she wanted to know. So how was the couch that night? It was good. It was good. It's better glad, than the about them. back of your truck that you had slept in. Dude, I, think, were... I think my back is still hurting from that. Um, I'm not lying. Yeah, I was also dude. Your hammered. tent was legit. Why didn't you just take your tent? Because I don't want to put my tent down on the side of the road. You're literally sleeping on the side of the road. Oh, boo-hoo, Bear grills. What a fucking pussy. Um, like, okay, thanks. I mean, cool. I I don't know, dude. Like, I was I was drunk. Like, I'll tell you that story some other time, but I was messed up. Uh, Black Friday camp out. Uh, I'm not going to do that this year. So, you know, last year I went and got that Oval Forest for 150. That was pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that this year with, with the scheduling, but are you thinking about maybe heading over to Specs early, early Black Friday morning? It's a possibility. God, November seems so far away. Um, it's not. I don't know. I mean, it's always like if the opportunity is there, why I mean, not? If you can, man, like it's it was pretty cool. Like I'm going to be driving back that morning, but uh, you should definitely go to your Specs and see if they're going to be doing it. And then that's what I did. Just, Show up there like at seven, sit out there for three hours and good to go. Where are you going to be driving back from? I go to my parents up in Dallas and we were driving back from there. Nice. 
Yeah. But when you come and visit, we should probably go get in line. Why? Just to go share the experience together. Maybe okay, we cool, yeah. Just go to the ahead. back of my truck in the parking lot or something. Okay, that's I don't fine. Know. Yeah. Sure. Right. Um, uh, what the other two there? things, Jack Daniels Sr., we already talked about it, but Jack Daniels Coy Hill has a name. Do tell. The 140 proof. So apparently this is aged. This is whiskey from the top racks of number eight and number 13 um, Rick houses on Coy Hill on Jack Daniels property. So, so this special re- is going to be their 2021 special release. It's got a white label, 140, 141 proof is what it's labeled. 141? At. Is it white dog? Like, holy hell. No, it's, it's barrel proof. That's what they run it across the. Uh, remember, if you think of think about what they uh, put in the barrel for like a day. <laughs> so when they, we talked to cousin Eddie last last week, like he even he cited that when he was talking about Jack Daniels how they run it across the charcoal at 140 proof. Oh so. yeah, cousin Eddie was a part of our show, but doesn't listen to it. Yeah, um, yeah, no, he he did good. Uh, that's good, man. That's exciting stuff. You know. It's you've turned we've I think we've turned into those people that we're not like we're gonna see those bottles on the shelves and be like hey and just grab it. It may not necessarily be one of the big names, but just as exciting. Um oh, dude, I've been listening to a lot of Joe Rogan lately, and it just makes me want to grab Buffalo Trace every time. Like are you also taking ivermectin? I thought about it. I I have horse parts, so I mean my ponytail um let's put the uh rating of our <laughs> let's put the rating of our glass on this scotch 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 i love scotch took you long enough you want to go first you want me to that's what she said uh you can go first so i think i gave this a b and a b plus I don't know. This is all reliable scotch for me, so I'm going to say minus. Doesn't add up to what I gave it earlier, but experience, bottle, presentation, it's scotch, nostalgia. It's an A minus, man. This is the scotch for me. I gave the nose a B plus. I don't think I rated the, the palate. I think I just went on a rant. But if I had to, I'll say B Sounds minus. Right. So B plus nose, B minus palate. Should be a B. Like this is like it's such a different category, but I'm I love this. Like this is great. This is delicious for the price and everything. Would you buy a bottle for the house to have a scotch? Yes. Okay. Um, in the backstories that we have to go along with it, and the fact that I'm closing my eyes and I'm on a 1970s airplane with a cigarette, like I don't I don't want to, but I've got to. I'm giving this an A. I like it. Just a for minus. the A minus. Okay. Just for the shag carpeting, right? And that's the thing. I've got the I've got the button down shirt, shiny simmer. I've got country roll. The big collar. <laughs> yeah. No, it's I, I, I'm I'm really enjoying bell bottoms. The scotch, and not because I've killed two little airplane bottles, but because I think it's good stuff. You murderer. But let me ask you this. Is this like so scotch drinkers? Would they be like, she was. Huh. Modern scotch drinkers like modern bourbon drinkers? Yes. I drink Macallan 18. Yes. That's what they'll, yes. The, like anything less than Glen Fittich is shit. But I think if you talk to like. I'll use my grandmother, for example. Like my grandmother drinks a lot of scotch. She drinks a lot of scotch throughout her years. Like it's it's what they used to roll with in the seventies, like sixties, seventies. It was Shivas, dude. Like that's it's the classic. It's the the it is the wild turkey, right? But I think it's the same with bourbon drinkers. Like people are like oh, well, do you like wild turkey? And like like there's that super uppity asshole group that only drinks BTAC and Blantons, and they're like yeah, wild turkey sucks. But if you drink to like real people, like everyday people, I guess Shivas is good. That's my two cents. So. 
I think Wild Turkey, like in maybe like partial like McConaughey thing, as the, as the Bengals have secretly become three and one. Didn't even realize that. Um, I think they've gotten in the respect oratory, but then again, that's coming from two people like me and you that have actually listened to the Russell speak and things like that. Um, I mean, I respect the hell out of Wild Turkey, but that's something that you've like we've gone on that journey and we're not new new people are like top shelf we got to get this so i understand that but no this is good stuff i definitely like it and it's it's really reminding me like i said last week of all the reasons that i got into scotch and and whiskey in general so it's it this is this is started off exactly how i've wanted it to go so i'll say that cheers cheers my friend Airplane bottles don't ding manly at all. <laughs> uh, all right. So we we shot the shit to start. We went on a little rant for a while. It was a good time for us. Uh, we got into pro football. We talked Brady's return. We talked the big Ole Miss Alabama matchup coming up. We gave you our favorites that we're looking forward to this whiskey season, and we're excited to go hunt. We closed out this episode reviewing this uh little scotch journey that we went on today and we'll continue to go on throughout the season and a dick shoot him with the socials one more time all right drammers so as we said we've got everything up on youtube right now so you can find this fourth dram uh and goal and you can listen to all 33 episodes out there right now soon to be 34 and then after we publish this 35 as always if you listen to us on apple podcast audible cast box podcast attic or any other podcast streaming service make sure to like rate and review us and then subscribe to us on youtube and don't forget to just shoot us an email fortram and goal at gmail.com kurt and i monitor that on a regular basis we'd love to interact with you talk to you get you on the show or just you know what shoot the shit whatever it may be but i really think that kurt has this lined out we brought us on the scotch journey i'm, I'm tagging along on this one kurt do you have a good quote of the episode that's going to just kind of like pull it together for us i think we have to go classy classy okay. football old school football, 60s 70s like, shivers drinking football yeah yes what what what's one of those teams that when i say 70s who do you think of you know who i think of do you know bo the oakland raiders like i said let's go cliche we're gonna go john madden John Madden once said, the road to Easy Street goes through the sewer. It's not always going to be pretty out there. You've got to go through the muck sometimes until you eventually get there. We're going to keep doing what we love. We're going to keep bringing you in. We're going to keep sharing our thoughts with you. But to the next snap, into the next dram. Drink on, drammers. We love you. We're out.